people have always had a fascination with convertibles, so it was no surprise when Ford introduced the Mustang on April 17, 1964, a convertible was offered. As a matter of fact, Mustang serial number one was a Mustang convertible, and the first Mustang sold to the public, also a Mustang convertible sold to Gail Wise, who still owns it to this day. So obviously throughout history, the convertible has played a very important part in the Mustang. So here we take a look back at the history of the Mustang convertible. From its debut in 1964 through the end of 1973, Ford offered a Mustang convertible through the entire first generation of the Mustang. While these days the fastbacks might be more desirable, the convertibles are not far behind. While the only fastbacks were typically the cars built with more muscle, Ford built a few big block convertibles as well. Shelby even got in on it, offering a Shelby GT350 and GT500 convertible in 1968 after making a few prototypes in previous years. Classic convertibles were built with modified wheel wells, stronger inner rockers, along with a unique seat platform, all to add strength to the topless Mustang. All these things made the convertible as heavy or heavier than equivalent hardtops, which is why they were rarely chosen for speed. Still, early convertibles were very popular with enthusiasts and even paced the 64 Indy 500. Unfortunately, in the 70s, there began to be questions on the safety of Mustang convertibles, and when the Mustang was redesigned in 1974, they could not justify the cost of building a convertible, and the convertible went away for almost a decade. 1979 brought us the first Fox body Mustang, and in 1983, after almost a 10-year absence, a Mustang convertible was once again available. The new Fox body convertibles basically began lives as coupes with a fiberglass transport roof to protect the interior, and then were sent to cars and concepts for installation of all the convertible assembly parts, along with some convertible specific parts including chassis stiffening. They then returned to Ford for final assembly and leak testing before shipping to dealers. Convertibles were available with all trim and engine options with the exception of the Cobra, which was available in hatchback only. There are plenty of unique Fox body convertibles including ASC McLarens, Celines, 7-Up cars, feature editions, and several others. Because of the design of the convertible chassis, they weren't as strong as the coupe and hatch and also weighed more, which didn't make them very popular with enthusiasts looking to go fast. Unlike the first generation Mustangs, convertibles are actually somewhat less desirable to buyers than the hatchbacks or coupes. With a little aftermarket support, they can be great cruisers and perform well too. 1994 brought us the new SN95 chassis and along with it, a brand new Mustang convertible. For the first time since the 60s, the Mustang convertible was built as a convertible from the get-go and featured many structural upgrades when built on the assembly line. SN95 convertibles were available in either GT or V6 versions and for the first time in 1994, you could order the Cobra in convertible form. That carried through 2004 with the exception of 2000 and 2002 when Ford did not offer a Cobra period. The introduction of the Cobra and convertible in 1994 also meant a return to Indy 500 as the pace car for the 1994 Indy 500. The actual pace cars were GTs with automatics, but four out of a thousand Cobra convertible pace cars to the public. Among other popular special editions were Celine's and a Mystic Chrome Cobra convertible in 2004. For the first and only time in 1995, Ford offered a removable hardtop version of the convertible. 499 Cobras were built along with a handful of GTs. Again, in many cases, customers preferred the hardtop cars to go faster due to the weight difference, but with the new chassis, the convertible was much better from the factory. Just like the SN95s, the S197 convertibles were built on the Ford production line and again featured a lot of the benefits of the new S197 chassis. They are available through the entire production with either a V6 or GT option. The return of the GT500 in 2007 also went back a GT500 convertible for the first time in 37 years. At the time, it was the most powerful convertible ever offered by Ford. Shelby production continued through 2014 with the 662 horsepower 13 through 14 GT500 convertible taking the title for the most powerful factory Mustang convertible that's ever been made. Convertibles from this era are on the heavy side and not quite as popular as hardtops, but are still very desirable, especially the Shelbys. The S550 Mustang chassis is available in both coupe and convertible versions and created a whole new world of performance for Mustang owners. It also produced a very capable Mustang convertible. The S550 Mustang convertible was available originally with a V6, 2.3 liter EcoBoost or 5 liter engine from 15 through 17, and then a 2.3 and 5 liter from 18 plus. Unlike the S197, there were no factory produced Shelby convertibles on the S550 chassis. Many enthusiasts had hoped the new 760 horsepower 2020 GT500 may be offered in convertible form, but Ford had acknowledged the performance of that vehicle was already maxing out the stiffer hardtop chassis, so they would not build a soft top version. Still with 460 to 480 horsepower, the GT convertible was still a very fast car, despite being a couple hundred pounds heavier than the hardtop. Obviously, the Mustang convertible has been a huge part of the Mustang's success, and there's very few things more American than a bright red Mustang convertible. So what does the future hold for the Mustang convertible? Well, with the S650 chassis rumored to be a revamped version of the S550, there's no reason to believe that the Mustang convertible is not going to live on for many, many more years. 
Now, whatever drives you, whatever draws you to Mustangs, whether it be performance, the style, the looks, whatever, there's definitely something about that perfect summer night in a Mustang convertible. If it's something you haven't experienced, I strongly suggest you do so.